Hello, Spontanea Nationals. It's Paul. Welcome to this live episode of Spontanea Nation recorded at Largo at the Coronet on September 12th, 2015. Uh, as it is a live episode, we are using headset mics and moving around. And so there are some minor sound glitches, little annoyances. This episode is not unlistenable by any stretch of the imagination, but occasionally you will notice the fidelity of the sound uh, on certain microphones is not as faithful as it could be. Um, but uh, I don't think it will I- I- impair your listening experience. Uh, if it does, check your ear doctor for t- t- moral support. Um, also, there is a, a few visual things, obviously, that is bound to happen. Uh, not too many. Uh, there is one, though, that is absolutely worth pointing out. Um, Matt Gorley at one point uh, has been miming uh, that he is uh, <laughs> holding a walker. I found out later <laughs> he was pretending to have a walker. And, um, of course, no one could know that. It just looked like he was holding something in his hands. And uh, then he said that he was, he explained that he was holding, he changed his mind or he realized people weren't getting it. So he said he was holding two sticks of dynamite. And the exchange that happens after that is one of my favorite things that has ever happened in life. And I'm including the birth of my son and also the day that I abandoned my son. Um, I think that's it. I, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, it's me and my pals from Super Ego and uh, the delightful Christian Shaw. Christian Shawl. She's a Christian, and her name is Shawl. Kristen Shawl. Boy, even this was a problem. Enjoy it! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this place we call Spontanean Asia with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. What is a show? Is it a collection of disparate elements? cobbled together to create I can't seem to get I can't seem to get jaunty with these furnitures nope it's not gonna do it not gonna do it sometimes people say uh, shows do we still need them that's probably the number one question that I have people ask me. Here's what I do. I go out to lunch with a friend, right? Like we sit at an outdoor table and then I, in secret, I've told another guy, hey, at 12.30, can you stop by this table and ask me, uh, I'm, I, here, here's what you do. I give him the whole script. I say, Mr. Tompkins, I'm so sorry to bother you. I'm a gigantic fan of yours. Real quick question. Do we still need shows? Now, my luncheon companion, of course, very impressed that I've been recognized dining al fresco. Because, you know, a lot of people that you might know from other places, if you see them eating outside, it's almost like you have face blindness. Because you're, <laughs> you're used to seeing them eat under man made lighting. But when you see them under God's lighting, and let's get into God. It's a totally different thing. Now, do we still need shows? Oh, at this point, the person that I get to ask the question, and I don't know why I keep asking the same person to do this. They forget they're supposed to leave. 
And so I turn to my luncheon companion and I start to answer the question. And then this dude is still just, he's like standing there. And then it's awkward, like he doesn't know what to do with his hands because he's not a professional actor. <laughs> anyway, check out my ad on Craigslist. I'm looking for a new person to ask this question. <laughs> But you gotta have the chops, man. You gotta have the chops. You gotta know what you're doing. You gotta know when to hold them, know when to fold them. <laughs> Don't bring cards. That's, that's on me because I kept saying to this guy, you gotta know when to hold them, know when to fold them. <laughs> that he would ask the question, that he pull out a pack of cards and he just start shuffling them. And then my luncheon companion is like, is this guy a three card Monty? Dude is like, uh, no, I don't know what his deal is. And then eventually what I would have to do was I would have to put a blanket over this guy's head and then he would think it was nighttime and he'd go to sleep. Oh, it was a large bird. I forgot. That's, that's an interesting part of the story that I always leave out and I, I keep forgetting to move it up to the top. It's a large sentient bird that I know. Still does not excuse his terrible acting instincts. Your whole thing is memorizing, dude. I thought I could get through a show without talking about birds, but it does not seem possible. What, what do you think it is about me? What sickness is that? I would say I'm obsessed with birds, except I'm not. I don't, I, don't, I don't think about them at all, unless I'm standing in front of a group of people. Birds. Anyway, my point is, we still do need shows. Because there's a lot of suffering in this world. Not here. Can you, can you imagine if there was like the kind of suffering in Los Angeles that there is in the rest of the world? Gross. Um, no, but the, uh, you know, there's a lot of suffering in the theoretical world that show business people talk about. And, um, you know, I feel like I'm doing my part Let's say there's a child uh, starving somewhere. He's got one of those fat bellies. And it's counterintuitive because you're like, I think that guy's eating a lot. And then you're like, that's not how science works. <laughs> like, I feel if I can do an improv show here, I'm balancing the scales. It's not up to me. <laughs> it's not up to me to say that, but I got to give it my best shot. <laughs> Believe me. This is my best shot. <laughs> this is my best shot of balancing the scales of injustice in the world. I might be wrong, guys. I don't know. Maybe I'll find out when I get up to heaven. And then God's going to be like, you didn't do enough to combat the suffering. And I'll be like, oh, uh, who made the suffering happen? You. <laughs> he hates that. He's always like, I gave you free will. And then I'm like, uh, why? <laughs> I think you can see by now, mistake. <laughs> why didn't you just make us pre-programmed flesh robots who always did the right thing, always took care of each other. Well, you don't need to take care of each other. So everybody's always doing the right thing. I think the problem is food distribution, really, more than anything. <laughs> I guess that's on us. I'll give you that one. <laughs> but he could have made food more available in places. Why aren't there just apple trees everywhere? <laughs> Someone once told me, you're not truly hungry if you're not willing to eat an apple. This is like to combat snack, like thoughtless snacking. <laughs> Which I don't, I don't like that term. So I think it's pejorative, thoughtless snacking. It's like, you don't think I'm thinking about this? It's all I'm thinking about. But the idea being that if you're truly hungry, you'll not turn your nose up at an apple. Let me tell you, there's been times 
There's been times when I've eaten an apple so begrudgingly. <laughs> with, with each tiresome bite that I had to take out of this thing. Like I'm a goddamn jungle animal. <laughs> no more. From now on, eating every apple with a knife and fork. Is that, is that what you do? You what? You like them in slices? Yes, but you don't, but you don't, and then you eat it with a fork? You don't want to get sticky on your fingers. That was brave of you to say. <laughs> She's right. None of us wants to get sticky on our fingers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation. What is, oh. <laughs> I graciously accept your applause. <laughs> Humble there in the word graciously. That was a real nail biter. I think I put an extra K sound in there. An extra K sound in the word graciously. <laughs> what is this show? Is anyone here who has no idea what this show is? By a round of applause. I wish I had the time to ask you what you thought this show was going to be. <laughs> this show is called Spontaneous Nation. What happens is, I come out here, I do that. <laughs> then I introduce some pals of mine, some improviser pals of mine. We chat with them a little bit, get to know them. Then, I introduce a special guest with whom I will have a freeform chat that's inspired by a blind question from our previous week's guest. And it is all accompanied on piano by Mr. Evan Schletter. Did you do your piano hello? I couldn't hear over the applause. There we go. Look, Mr. Rogers, he's no longer with us. Somebody had to fill the void of a man wearing a tie talking to music. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce our first improviser pal of the evening. Oh, this is a special night because all of my colleagues from the Super Ego Performing Collective are here this evening. We have not done we have not done narrative long form improv together in a couple years. I'm very excited to have them on this show. Please say hello to Mr. Jeremy Carter. There he is. Oh, sure. Jeremy, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Paul. Now, Jeremy, for the listener, you've shaved all your hair off your head. <laughs> Did what now? Now, you told me this is in preparation for a role. You're doing a show. I am playing Donald Trump. <laughs> That's right. Now, this, this episode will come out long after that show is over, so you can reveal the fun surprise. What's going to happen is, as I place my hair in next to my cheek <laughs> his hair is going to come off and then talk to people <laughs> does it have a little animatronic thing? I haven't seen it yet don't know <laughs> <laughs> ah! I think it's actually going to be a hand puppet <laughs> yeah alright that's right like, his re like the real Donald Trump <laughs> would you vote for him in an election? 
Would I choose to sear out my eyes by watching Star Wars Attack of the Clones over and over again? <laughs> the answer to both questions is no. <laughs> That's the worst thing you could think of. <laughs> it's pretty fucking bad. <laughs> That's that's the middle one of the uh, of the prequels. Yes, and really the one where the least happens. At least, at least in the first one. Do we talk about this too much? Probably. Can you can you squeeze birds in there somewhere? <laughs> you, you you don't have to. Working on it. Okay. Um, the, no, the, at least in the first one you're appalled. entertaining in a way it's something just it's, to feel outrage it elicits an emotion yes. the second one just it's just like a nap <laughs> and not a good like a hot like a like weather we've been having like a 107 degree nap just oh this isn't even worth it you know just <laughs> moist sheets and <laughs> Oh, I need a shower. I showered a minute ago. Now I'm going to need another one. You know, it's... So that's Attack of the Clones. What about that Sith movie? Yeah, oh, boy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the best of them, but that's like saying, well, that, that poop doesn't taste as bad as the other two. <laughs> Why are you tasting poop? Uh, somebody sold it to me. <laughs> somebody sold it to me. <laughs> They said it was dipped in chocolate, but guess what? Poop dipped in chocolate still tastes like poop. That's true. But with a hint of chocolate. A hint. And so that would be Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> Jeremy Carter, ladies and gentlemen. I banish you to back there. Silence. The best part was seeing people stop applauding as quickly as they could. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to Matt Gorley! <laughs> Matt, hello! I was watching Attack of the Clones today. That is a true story. That's why he referenced it. Why were you watching that film? Because it's a great film. <laughs> well, I didn't hear your conversation, but I'm assuming. I don't know. I don't know why I was watching. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It was not for a purpose. <laughs> it was not like a thing where, oh, I'm going to, I need to watch this film for research for or something. It was just you had, you, you were like, is life finite? I'm not sure. And you were like, I'm going to throw on A of the C. Yeah, I just realized that, that I just blurted that out. And it feels like I've admitted I'm a sexual deviant. <laughs> Did you say you admitted you have a Ooh. sexual eating disorder? <laughs> yeah. No, Dad, Dad, that's no. not what he said, What's Dad. That? Dad. No. I Let me open to... the toilet door so no, I can Dad, hear you better. Dad, keep it closed, Dad. I eat chocolate covered poo. Is this the type of show you normally like to do? I've been going a little crazy trying to beat the heat. Don't chastise me or I'll flash back to where <laughs> Flashback to friendship. <laughs> now you've put a mattress in your office because yeah. that's where the air conditioner is. My girlfriend is working out of town for two and a half months and we have one air conditioner in the office and so I pulled the mattress into the office and me and the big fat cat have a slumber party every night. Thank you. And I honestly don't know if I'm going crazy or finally the cat and I are starting to bond. She's been <laughs> chilling out, and this is a little embarrassing, but I woke up in the middle of the night sleeping like this. Like just uh, like a starfish. Yes. You're all and spread she, out. She was between my legs in the exact same position. <laughs> I 
setting. I wish I had a camera on the ceiling. I'm sure that's not true. Uh, do you think it's that this cat hates your girlfriend? She's jealous. It may be. She's jealous of your girlfriend. Their cycles have synced and they're all... Oh, so. Each other there's a rivalry or something like that. No, she's fixed. It's all right. That's why that's impossible. Yeah. Now, you said your girlfriend is out of town for how long? Two and a half months. I saw her today at Chick-fil-A. Isn't that weird? Yeah. We were in line together. We're getting chicken sandwiches. Isn't that strange? Yeah, It's a weird thing. Why would I see her? She's out of town. Coyotes, man. There's a lot of coyotes around lately. It gets hot. There's, there's no water up in the mountains. They come down into the town. They're eating pets. Can I tell you a what something? Oh, I wish you. I, I, I wish you would. You got to be coyote. You got to beat the heat. You come out of that hot water sewer and you go, you go try to take uh, dog, dog water. Dog water? Dog water Jones, please. Oh, you. hello. Turn the end off. That's right. Son of a bitch. Ladies or gentlemen, a huge round of applause for Mark McConville. Mark, Hi, Paul. what are you doing to beat the heat? <laughs> Dressing like Chevy Chase from a Paul Simon video. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, Pat, that's working pretty great. I like this confident guy that I'm talking to right now. Well, thanks, man. He, know, he knows who he is. He knows yeah. what he's doing. Yeah. I'll pretend to play the trumpet for about 30 seconds. Too. <laughs> what's, your, what's your secret? How did you get to be this way? It's just I bought these clothes. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> Is it like a sort of uh, 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 the mask scenario where you put these clothes on? And... <laughs> Whoa, where'd you come from? <laughs> Smoke it. Did you see Son of the Mask? Why, why are we talking so much about movies? That's a great film. <laughs> Said Attack of the Clones. Wouldn't that be great if Attack of the Clones reviewed Son of the Mask? Please, I like it. Leave it alone, says Attack of the Clones. <laughs> I haven't seen it. Uh, Son of the Mask? I haven't seen it. You've seen the original Mask, of course. Yeah. With Jim Carrey. Hell of a film. <laughs> Hell of a film. I know it's been so long. I know. Who gives a shit? Right. Mark. <laughs> it's, it's hot out. It's yeah. hot right now in Los Angeles. Yeah, it is. You come from a cold place. I do. Tell them where that place is. I'm from Wisconsin. <laughs> Did you hear that? Wait. Someone went, oh. <laughs> said no. <laughs> which which did you say? Did you say no or oh? Oh. oh. Okay. Right. She thinks it's in France. <laughs> oh. Somebody stop me. I think I can't not supposed to sit on this side. Just get yourself situated, however. Oh, that seems that seems natural. Paul oh, Silverstein, yeah. <laughs> Inside, Inside reference. Joke. Uh, wh- how long did it take you to adjust to the uh, to the weather here in Los Angeles from the cold place? All right, now when you go to a cold place, are you colder than you normally yeah, would be? I never. It's lovely there, but I I only want to go back in the warm times. Because your blood thins. 
Yeah, when I decided to move to Los Angeles, it was September. It was around this time of year. Sure. A little later. Oh, what a night. Late September, I got some scoopers. You sons of bitches. Stop touching my sound effect. September. It, was, it, snowed, it snowed in September, and I was like, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm leaving this place. I don't like the cold. You never liked it, even as a child. But I didn't know I didn't like it till I left. <laughs> didn't you like sledding? I did. People where I'm from called it sliding. <laughs> what? I'll go sit back well, here. That's <laughs> demented. Mark McConville. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have met our improvisers. What is going to happen is, after the break, we're going to bring out our special guest. We're going to have a chat, and then we'll get a location from that guest uh, for our improv, and then myself and the rest of Super Ego, we will do a narrative story, all one story told over the course of one. There's no break in the middle. We're going what? straight through. Oh, I thought we were good. No. <laughs> Adjust your expectations and make your peace with God. <laughs> all of that will happen when Spontaneous Nation returns! <laughs> Friends, the next live Spontanean Nation happens Saturday, December 5th at Largo at the Coronet, featuring improvisers Hal Lublin, Annie Savage, and Janet Varney, three of my pals from the Thrilling Adventure Hour and from Spontanean Nation, and our special interview guest is Ron Funches. This will be a wonderful show, and it's a benefit show. All proceeds will be donated to Habitat for Humanity. Um, these shows are always a good time. Anyway, come on down. You will see exclusive live moments that only the live audience gets to see. Uh, there will be a meet and greet after the show. Me and Eben and people from the cast will be signing things. We'll have posters by Nathan Diffie for sale. Um, the great Lego poster that he made, which hopefully will not get us sued. Uh, you can see that on our Facebook page. Um, and uh, the, all the proceeds from uh, any merch we sell that night will also go to Habitat for Humanity. And as, and as always, guys, free stickers. That nothing will ever change the price of stickers. They will always remain free. Please do come out and see the show. Tickets are going fast. Uh, this show will sell out, and you will want to see it. Tickets for tickets, tickets for tickets, tickets for tickets. Go to pauleftompkins.com slash live. Remember, that's tickets for tickets, tickets for tickets, tickets for tickets. pauleftompkins.com slash live. <laughs> oh. <laughs> when did ads get so great? <laughs> Welcome back to Spontaneous Nation, people who never went anywhere. <laughs> it's time for us to introduce our special guest this evening. This young lady you will recognize from Flight of the Concords, from Last Man on Earth, from Bob's Burgers, from a million other things besides. I know her from friendship. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage, Kristen Shaw! <laughs> Please have a seat. <laughs> for, for our listeners, Kristen is wearing a beautiful formal gown because you just came from the Creative Arts Emmys. Yes. And you were, uh, the Bob's Burgers program was nominated. It was nominated and it lost. <laughs> yeah. 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 So take it easy, guys. Is it on? I don't know. I can't tell. I don't think it is. Take a look and see if there's a green light. Green means it's go. Off. <laughs> and it's on. It's green. Just like my dress. It's on. It's on. It'll be there. It's, it's, on. it's on. It's on. It's on. Yeah. The feedback means it's working. <laughs> now, Kristen, I have. Thank you for being here. You, you look smashing. Yeah, I could. I I couldn't wait to come be on your show. So you're like, I'm not gonna change into my my 
sweats in the car, put on my, take my pumps off, put on my Reeboks. Is that what you think I wear? You know what I wear. You wear sweats and Reeboks, right? Am I wrong about that? Well, you tuck that into my gown. Thank you, Dad. I'm trying to be a lady for one freaking night. <laughs> what happened? What do you say? It's not too late. It's best not to question. Chris, and I have a question for you submitted by our previous guest. Okay. Are you curious as to the previous guest? I am, actually. I am. I, I, that was my next question. Would you like to know who it is? Yes, I would like to know who the previous guest was, Well, please. I would direct you to the Spontaneous Nation Archives on <laughs> Earwolf.com. <laughs> Hours of listening pleasure await you. <laughs> Kristen, here's my question. <laughs> Not my question, but the question I am going to ask you. From the previous guest. From the guest, previous guest. His name was... We'll find out together on the internet. <laughs> but I can guess from the question. See if you can. I'd be interested. Yeah, I'd be interested in seeing who you think it might be. Here's the question. What is one event that you would go back and change in your life? Oh, my. <laughs> heavy. Some heavy stuff, right? They don't always get that heavy. So a lot of the questions are about food. <laughs> I don't know why you got this heavy one. That's interesting. Just one event? One thing. One thing in all your life that if you could, you would go back and change it. Um, just one? I tell you what. I tell you what. I make the rules here. You can change as many events as you like. Oh, gosh. Good. That seems harder that's, to me. No. That's a tough question because you're supposed to live your life, you know, having no regrets. And even right. the things, the decisions that you made that ended up kind of poorly... Uh, are good because they just build your character. Yes. I don't like a, got so, so much character. <laughs> I didn't want to because the, there are experience, that. there are experiences though where you say, like, oh, that was just a dumb decision that I made. I didn't need that to build character. That was I just shouldn't have done that. Yeah. I will tell like for me, smoking is a thing. I smoked for almost 20 years, and I wish that I had never ever started. Even though I haven't smoked in about 10 years now. I wish that I had never, ever started it in the first place. What a dumb waste of time that was. I didn't yeah. get anything out of that. You no, know what I mean? I don't understand smokers because it's like, uh, it seems like you just do it to be social because you don't know what to do with your hands. <laughs> Can I tell you this, the ugly secret of smoking? And this is what nobody wants to admit. Yeah. People only smoke because they want to look cool. That's no, the only they look, reason. They look insecure. Yeah, they look dumb. Yeah. It's a dumb thing, guys. <laughs> How is it still hanging around? That uh, it boggles my mind. <laughs> but when you see people in front of an office building because they can't smoke inside, like, does that look cool? No. <laughs> Thanks for backing me up. <laughs> so that's the thing that I would change if I could. That's a great thing. Um, <laughs> but that's not an event, is it? That's a habit. And the question was the first time I smoked a cigarette. About an event. The first oh, time I okay. smoked, that was an event. And what an event it was. <laughs> oh, what, an event. what, ha what happened? It <laughs> I started smoking. I never smoked in high school. And then I started doing stand up uh, one month after I graduated high school. And then I was like in a world of adults and I wanted to appear more sophisticated. So I started smoking. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I feel like I'm a real dud interview. No, I, I don't know why you booked me on your show. <laughs> I'm sorry, the, the question threw me. My mind is racing because I'm such an optimist. Like, but you may interpret it any way you wish. Um, one event that I could go back and change. I guess, uh, I, uh, I mean, I would, well, I would stop 9-11. There we, there we go. Exactly. Let me let me check the book because I don't think it's I don't think it's it's confined to your life. I think it's a very oh. open question. Oh, good. I think it says. Yeah, I think it says just one event. Is that is that your main one or assassination of Archduke Ferdinand? Is that. Well, that was you know that's a funny question because you know that was one dude and it definitely was the shot I heard around the world and but. It wasn't bound to happen anyways, you know, there is so much discontent. Well, it was that, bound to happen anyway. Well, I mean, do you think if that if you had if he hadn't gotten shot that World War II would have never happened? World War One. Shut up. 
right? You think it would have been just fine? Uh, I'm not, uh, that's above my pay grade. <laughs> I can't answer that question. Um, so if I had to go back and, and stop one event, I guess um, maybe what I would do differently is, God, I just did everything so right. It, let me, but hold on a second. Here's the thing. It's not necessarily a thing that you did wrong or a thing that, that uh, uh, affected your life in a personal way. It could be like, you had a bike accident, yeah. right? Well, I thought about that. I was, this was the first thing that popped into my head. I, so I had a bike accident a year ago and I... Um, Happy anniversary. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and I was drink, drinking wine in, up in Solvang, as one does, and having a good time and being safe because I wasn't driving, I was on my bike. And, <laughs> yeah, and I was going downhill and my tire caught wrong on the road and I flipped over the handlebars and, um, and bravely, my mouth broke the fall. <laughs> it was great. Um, but then I lost some teeth and, I, and everything, and it was re a real drag. But, but then it turned into a positive thing because I got to binge watch the Game of Thrones <laughs> two weeks because I couldn't really leave the house because they had no teeth. And I, you were waiting for your, your new teeth to be prepared, is that right, correct? Well, the, yeah, the, so the front teeth got knocked out, and yeah, and so they put these um, implants in, and yeah, the, everything had to heal because my palate got broke, like I had to have like cadaver bone in there, just a lot. It was quite a mess, and, <laughs> and yeah, it was pretty bad. It was very traumatic. I, I mean, if anyone needs to be defanged, it's me. Um, and I, I don't know, but then like my husband, Rich Blomquist, was so wonderful as he always is, just to like, just made the relationship even stronger. I mean, when your wife is sitting there toothless with her lip cut open, <laughs> and he's like, you know, being so kind and sweet, you're just like, boy, I gotta <laughs> never leave this one. <laughs> This is, this is, I knew this was the one, but it just, you know, and then... Um, <laughs> it does sound like he played it perfectly. Oh, he did? He yeah. played it exactly. <laughs> exactly. He did the things you're supposed to do. He did be, be kind and sweet. Yeah, he was really nice. And not like, you go, ugh. Yeah, he did, yeah. Exactly. Wear a Michael Jackson mask. Yeah, right. Or, where's my blowjob, you know, you toothless. Anyway, so... Wear a Michael Jackson mask because that's what would make me feel more comfortable. Um, so, you know, so there's that. And then also, it just made me appreciate everything I was doing more. Like, I do so much voiceover, and I think maybe I was just getting a little restless in the booth. And the minute I, that I realized that could go away, I was just even more grateful to be in the booth and to be able to speak again. and and then the teeth that they that I that they screwed in me were are actually a little little fancier than my old teeth. <laughs> so it's like I maybe maybe I'm kinda glad it happened. <laughs> Did you have to learn how to uh, talk around your new teeth? Was there any was there any difference there? No, because um, they, because luckily my husband picked the teeth up off the asphalt. Oh, okay. They were able to match them to the same shape, so they're the same shape as my old teeth, just a little bit wider. <laughs> yeah. Do you still have your your original teeth that got knocked out? No, um, I don't. Oh. No, the, the the dentist kept them, and apparently they're. Well, I don't like that. Not, not around, not around no, but still, it's like serial killer stuff. Right, well, exactly. He said that um, cadaver, because it, it is part of a, it's like a, it's dead body tissue. Sure. So it has to be disposed of. Come on. I know, I know, I know. But this happened in Santa Barbara, so I think they have rich people rules up there. Yeah, well, who? <laughs> so he's like dri uh, driving baby teeth down to the dump? This is <laughs> bullshit. I don't get it either. I really wanted those. Well, you think you want those teeth, but, you know, teeth aren't that attractive when they're out of your face. Like, they got the, I'll grant you, I'll they grant got you that. The roots and yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, either you forget about the 
roots. I know. Because the roots are when you see like a picture of a, a happy tooth at the in front of a dentist's office or whatever. Yeah. Like a tooth that's like brushing itself, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. <laughs> His little legs that he's standing on, those yeah. are the roots of those the, the tooth. Roots of it's the an tooth. upside down tooth. Yeah. Well, depending well, on which part. Okay. Yeah, I got it. I got it. <laughs> Jesus. God. I don't know. I, Kristen, let me apologize for this audience. Um, it's like yeah. a, a comment section. <laughs> I mean, but they're not wrong. Uh, what if the teeth was at the bottom? <laughs> um, so I, I don't know if I would change that a bit. Uh, can you believe it? I think I would just, I'm going to let that event ride the way it's sure. supposed to. And m- maybe I would be, um, ni- like, s- go on, spend more quality time with my family or something. I don't know. I, I, I don't know why people are laughing at that. I think that's a perfectly valid thing. That Because that is, experiences like that, I think, are... When you look back at it later, you're like, oh, I didn't need to go there. Like, that is, because those, those are moments that you don't feel like you can get back. Yeah. That, like, oh, I should have spent more time with this person, yeah. or I should, have, I should have gotten to know this person better, or whatever. And then you think about, it, it, it could drive you crazy to think about time you have wasted just doing dumb shit. Yeah. Like, say, watching Attack of the Clones. <laughs> sure. Clone Sultan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mark. I, I, I don't think you have to worry. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can go ahead and mail that one to yourself, but I think you're... Uh, your family lives uh, in Colorado. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, all right. Uh, and do you get to... Do you feel like you get to see them often enough now? Do you feel like your life is structured so that you are able to see them when you want to see them? Or do you feel like it's never enough? I feel like I see them um, a good enough time. (laughs) But then I feel like if they listen to this, they'd be like, no, she doesn't. Of of course, (laughs) of course. Um, Yeah, I probably see them twice a year. Mm. Which is silly because I feel, I know people from Australia will go, they're like on the other side of the world and they see their family more than I do. Because when they go home, they like go home. Because the, because it's it's absurd that people live there, it's and then <laughs> it's like <laughs> any 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 time they take any kind of trip, it's always no matter where they go, it's so far away that it's like, look, we gotta make it count. So we're gonna be here. We're gonna be embedded in this country for six months. Yeah. <laughs> Just so we can feel normal when we get back home, because the travel itself is hellish. You've been to New Zealand many times, yeah, right? And Australia. And Australia. I've been to New Zealand once and Australia once, but that is one many, for each. One for each. Same trip. Different trips. Yeah. Did you go to Hobbiton when you were in New Zealand? No, I did not. <laughs> but I did go to Brett's house in Jermaine's house. <laughs> With Brett. Oh, did you really? Yeah, we were, he hadn't seen it yet. And I was like, hey, there you are. And he's like, that's it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's in, he makes he's a cameo in it, in it yeah, right? Yeah. Quickly. And then also, The Hobbit is just like damn packed with dudes. Did you notice that? It's a real sausage like, party. Guy, 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 guy. Yeah. It's, and I was like overwhelmed by it. And then um, Jermaine picked us up. We were, they were like divorced parents. Picked us up for our time together. And then... What? What? <laughs> what? Why was that the arrangement? Because he was the only one that had a car or something? No, Jermaine doesn't drive. Only Brett has a car. How did he pick you up? You're, well, so Jermaine met us and then Brett dropped us off at his house. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Jermaine met us and we got in a cab. Yeah. Jermaine met you at the theater. Yeah. So he took a, presumably took a cab to the theater. Yeah. And then you got in a cab together and went someplace else. Then we went and watched a rough cut of What We Do in the Shadows, which was a movie. Jermaine's movie, yeah. yeah. Way before it was out. And it was also just jam-packed with dudes. And I was like, ah! Dudes, 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 dudes. 
Did you express that to them that I day? I did. And they um, put a lady in it more. <laughs> did they really? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think, though, that you would have been as attuned to that had you not just seen no, five hours of Hobbit? Exactly. I don't know if I would have. Yeah. I think I just had seen so much dude. <laughs> so much fancy production of dude. <laughs> My gosh. My favorite movie of all time, Lawrence of Arabia, has zero women in it. Mm-hmm. The only time you ever see women is way off in the distance as they're uh, cheering the men on as they go off to battle. Oh, no. And then that's it. <laughs> you know what? We should write a movie where we uh, start with that scene and then we just zoom into one woman in the background cheering and then we just follow her. Story. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I've had that experience so many times at movies. I think one of the times was the seeing, it was a movie called The, oh, there was two that came out at the same time. The Prestige, is that the one with, with uh, Hugh Jackman? Oh, the, the magician. Yeah. yeah. And there's a part in this movie where Hugh Jackman is this one dude, and then they find a dude that looks like Hugh Jackman, also played by Hugh Jackman. And the second Hugh Jackman is so delightful. <laughs> that it's like, make the movie about him. I don't care what happens to anybody else. Let's follow this weird drunk dude and see what trouble he gets into. Yeah. It's not too late. They can still make that movie. <laughs> they can still make that movie. Speaking of like watches, uh, the, again, I'm sure it's this question, I didn't think I could be baffled by any question, um, but I'm so... That's a bit, to be fair, that's a big question. I'm satisfied with my life, I guess. Um, <laughs> what a wonderful revelation to have. I know, except for, I will say, there has been long, long periods of my, of my life where I have felt like I was very unproductive. Especially like, oh, let's write this movie. Like, I always talk about writing, and I don't do it. It's hard to write things. It, yeah, but it's easy to talk about wanting to write It things. sure is. <laughs> it sure is. I think I have the ideas, but I just don't have the discipline to sit down and, and do it. Do you have ideas that you've had in your head for years and years and years yeah. and never done anything with? Yeah. yeah. Because there are, like, ideas. Like, follow her story. Like, that's the yeah. idea. That, that, that I don't have the rest. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> Are you, you're just waiting for somebody else to kind of do the kind heavy lifting of it. I'm like the you know story by yeah. You really you need to like Tom Sawyer somebody into writing the thing for you. Like ah, oh, I need. A I wish I could, I wish I had time to write. It's so much fun to write movies. <laughs> I wish I could do it. Why don't you try it? It's so much fun. <laughs> I, I don't get that Tom Sawyer reference. <laughs> Sorry. Tom Sawyer tricked uh, people into whitewashing a fence. He had to whitewash oh. a fence. He didn't want to do it. So then he, he started Mr. doing Miyagi. it. Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> except, except, except none of those kids learned karate <laughs> from whitewashing the fence. Well, their fault. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel that whoever wrote The Karate Kid is the Mark Twain of our time? (laughs) Sure. (laughs) But less racist. A a little bit. A little bit. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, Kristen Shaw! during my interview. No, out of respect for the guests, we always take the piano music but away. I, I was hoping I'd have it because it just makes everything sound better. Could you hold on one second? These dum-dums are whispering on microphones. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is, what's going on? Do you want to know the truth? Yeah. We have to pee so bad. <laughs> well, you're in luck. You're in luck. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a break for various reasons. <laughs> During the break, we will get our location from Kristen Shaw, and when we return, we will act out our story. All of this and nothing else when Spontaneous Nation returns! Are you a business that would like to advertise on Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins? No? Well, then you're just like everybody else this week. Back to the show.
Why do ads ever have to stop? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to do our fun improv stuff. <laughs> we'll be telling one continuous story. It'll be populated by many characters. I bet some of them are going to be cuckoo. <laughs> Mentally ill. <laughs> to aid our storytelling, we use sound effects to move us about in time. If we're going to a scene that is occurring concurrently to the scene we are presently in, we will cut to that scene using this cut to sound effect. Whoosh, we're there. Let's say we want to travel backwards in time. We all do. <laughs> we will use this flashback sound effect. Let's say somebody's having a memory or we're discovering how something came to be. We will hear this flashback sound effect. <laughs> uh! <laughs> if that don't communicate flashback to you, go get your head examined. <laughs> That's from my commercial for sound effects. <laughs> If we wish to go forward in time, let's say we want to get out of that flashback back to the present day, or to go into the mysterious future, we'll hear this flash forward sound effect. What? <laughs> now, it is time to reveal the location given to us by Kristen Shaw. <laughs> Fuck you, listener. <laughs> I'll never explain what happened. I'll I will never explain what people were laughing at. <laughs> Our location provided by Kristen Shaw is parking garage. Weird, weird round of applause for parking garage. Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now to Parking Garage. Yeah, if you don't have a ticket, you can't leave this parking garage. That's just... What do you mean I can't leave the parking garage? You have my car. Yeah, and we're keeping it till you get your ticket. Well, I figured that's the way parking garages work, right? So I leave my car here for a while. A big shot like you in a designer suit, you can probably afford to just buy a new car. <laughs> You know, you shouldn't make assumptions. Can I tell you why I'm wearing a designer suit? I'd love to know. I figure you have a meeting or some sort of job. I test out the designer suits to see if they'll stand up under normal walking around conditions. I shouldn't even be driving a car at all. It's a pretty nice car down there, though. Yeah. I also test the cars. What kind of economy do we live in where a guy's got to have two jobs? <laughs> hey, you're in here revising history, too, when people are trying to get out of this parking garage. You, wait, what's that? Yeah, I'm fixing Wikipedia. <laughs> so you're just going into Wikipedia and you're just correcting things yeah, I get that are already in there? It. Yeah, like World War I is not the same as World War II, but now it is. <laughs> I'm switching it around, man. So you're just you're just putting World War One and World War Two together? Yeah, Franz Ferdinand. <laughs> Nazis. Who who pays you to do that? John Wiki. John Wiki, I've never heard of him. Where who who is he? Uh, there's no smoking in the parking garage unless you have a ticket for smoking. <laughs> Sam, it's me. Oh, John. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Wait, is, is that John Wiki? He invented Wikipedia. I just thought I'd come down here and look cool. <laughs> is, there, is it working? Do you think it'd be okay if I went and talked to him? Yeah, just don't get any smoke in that designer suit. Don't. <laughs> Good catch. Hey, Mr. Wiki. Oh, hi. Hi, John Wiki. Hi there. John Wiki Jr. Nice to meet you. I never know what to do with my hands. <laughs> by, 
My name's Ben Jafarge. Oh, ja <laughs> Jafarge. Uh, uh, you know, there's a Jafarge family that in they invented brownie fudge up in uh, the uh, northern Pennsylvania before it became unified as singular parts Pennsylvania. He's a fountain of knowledge. <laughs> Mr. Wiki, may I call you John? Sure. <laughs> I don't have to. You're free. You call me Junior. Okay. Oh, Junior. Sure. Mr. Junior. Mr. Junior. I'll change it on your page, sir. <laughs> High schoolers go in there and they said it was the third for a while. Oh, I'm oh, watch sorry. Out for this. Let me. It's my designer it's suit. It's Turkish. Does that make a difference? A little bit, actually. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Junior, I have this weird life where I have to wear uncomfortable clothes all day. Yeah. They're not even mine. I have to give them back at the end of the day. Do, you, I, have, do you have to wash them before you give them back? I'm supposed to, but I don't. <laughs> right on. High five. I wonder if, I don't suppose, you can have the parking garage attendant change my Wikipedia entry. I don't even know if I have one. Oh. Am I in your Wikipedia? Uh, Jafarge, was it? Ben Jafarge. Ben Jafarge. <laughs> Look up Ben Jafarge on I... Wikipedia. G-E-O-F-A-R-J. Hang on. H. I, I Jafarge. The new uh, iPhone 6SS. -S. Ooh, it's a super sport. It's working! <laughs> <laughs> I changed the iPhone Wikipedia last week. They've renamed the phone. Ooh, mine's a seven minus. <laughs> That's weird. That wasn't me. <laughs> what? I didn't put seven minus. Somebody else has been in here, Junior. What? <laughs> Mr. 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 Wiki. Mr. Junior. John Wiki Senior. <laughs> oh. Quick, get in the booth. What? Get in the booth. You don't want to be out there. Don't listen to that man. Me, my son, you, Elder Barge, we all... We all came in here and we lost a ticket to our cars. And he's never let us leave. We invented Wikipedia because we was fucking bored. Well, so we all have our own separate stories of how we came to be here? That's Parking lot attendant, I wonder what yours is! <laughs> Hello, miss. I thought I'd tell you how single I am. I'm single, too. Shit. All the way single. How single are you? I, I'm so single... I, I go through like that Pac-Man door to the other side, I'm almost taken. That's how single I am. Does that make sense? In a way. Yeah. I didn't catch your name. Batch. My name is Batch. What? <laughs> I hope we're not related. Is that your first name or your that's last name? That's my first name. Oh, that's mine too. What's your last name? Jason B. Oh, mine's Thorpe Ringer. <laughs> so we're not related. I've never heard that last name I'm before. adopted, though. <laughs> I always thought Batch was a guy's name. Hey, what do you do for a living? Right now, I don't have a job. Oh. I've been walking around out here looking for my parking ticket. <laughs> really? Yeah. I've got a parking ticket. You do? Yeah. I was going to use it to get out of here. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> So I loved her. Uh, yeah, but we had so much in common. Yeah, well, the name thing. But also, um, so your story, the reason you're here is you didn't have the ticket? Yeah, but no one was working, so I took over. Why didn't you just leave? I couldn't get my car out. Have you seen this barricade? Oh, ooh, and they have the spikes. Dude, they have the severe tire damage spikes. It yeah, would have been like the Maginot line from World War II. <laughs> Let me change it. 
I'm just gonna change it back tonight. <laughs> How did you get a laptop, senior? I found one. Because this is the parking garage to a Best Buy. <laughs> and they throw them away, nightly, day old laptops. <laughs> yeah, I've seen the expiration stickers. Uh, Johnny, if you could step into my office here. Uh, are you properly throwing away the laptops at the end of the night? Yeah, I'm getting rid of the ones from Tuesday on Wednesday, and I'm getting rid of the ones from Wednesday on Thursday. All right, Donnie, I just, you know, you got to mark them out before you put them out there in the bin. Clearly marked. Perfectly good laptops we don't need anymore. Yeah, but once you take them out of the refrigerator, well, they're not fresh anymore. That's company policy. That's what I'm saying. All right, Donnie, good work, and uh, we're going to give you a 79-cent raise. Ooh, I don't have to join a union. <laughs> so, here's one. It's a little stale. <laughs> Wait, does this laptop work? Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> Open it up. All right, hold on a second. I'll hold it. Thank you. Go to wikipedia.org. Wikipedia.org. The English one, the American one. Return. All right, look up Elk Grove Best Buy parking lot. Elk Grove Best Buy parking lot. Return. Scroll down and see if the parking regulations are listed here on this entry. Loading. Sorry. <laughs> it's a day old. What do you expect? <laughs> oh, there it is. I'm totally in. Good. This laptop works. That's the only entry in my laptop that I can't change, which I will not explain to you. <laughs> what do you need me to do? Change the entry so we can all get out of here. I don't want to live in a parking garage anymore. Do I need to make an account or something? You can, I guess, yeah, probably. But I mean, do I need to, or can I just put stuff in there? It's there. Just, hey, use guys, my how is it? Oh, okay. and my pin number. <laughs> I use my pin number as my user ID. It's so I okay, don't no, no, no. Ow. teach you anything. Oh. I gotta get away from my dad. Mm. What? What is with you guys? Hey, Dad, I got an A plus. You're a dick. <laughs> It's his response to everything. So, love you. Sounds like a real... The problem is, we created Wikipedia, so we're ruled by our Wikipedia pages. Whatever you put into our pages is how we live. It's magical realism. <laughs> Future where he starts disappearing from the picture with his siblings. Is that the one in the Wild West? <laughs> check I'll the change it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> While I'm in here, Attack of the Clones. Fuck it. Delete. <laughs> but, but if you guys. I'll do it later. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck is happening. I think if we change the rules to this parking garage, we can get out, and there will be no ramifications whatsoever. There is an entry for the this parking garage on Wikipedia, right? I yeah. Let me look up Elk Grove yep. parking garage Best Buy. Best Buy. Yep. I'll put it that in parentheses. <laughs> it's here. Good. If rules also, of if that doesn't work, we can use these two sticks of dynamite I've been holding the whole time. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. Uh -oh. I thought they were like candles or something. They, they are for a little bit. <laughs> Let me see. What do you think would be reasonable parking rules for a garage? Well, let me see the rules that there are. Can't get your car out without a ticket. Can't leave the parking garage on foot without a ticket. 
can't leave the parking garage, period. Live there for all time. Someone what? has been changing this. And it's someone in this parking garage. <laughs> it's absolutely me. Oh. oh. Here's the thing. I got a dick of a son. My wife left me. Her name is Batch. And she went looking for love someplace else. And I'm just lonely. Because she kept calling her a dick. <laughs> she is. She left me. Batch Before Thorn, that. Batch Thorn Ringer. I met her once. You didn't. <laughs> Mama? What was that like? Hi. So, so I didn't catch your name. My name is Batch. Yeah. My name's Batch. What's your last name? Have we done this scene before? Deja vu. Mine is Jason B. I'm a Thornbringer. Well, I guess we're not related. <laughs> I, feel like I, I feel like I told you that you story. You did tell me that story. I totally forgot that you told me that story. I heard it differently. <laughs> I just left my husband because I'm a dick. <laughs> I don't care what happens. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Mama? Mama? <laughs> oh. Mom was a dick. Wait, wait. What if we make it so that she was a completely different person? That she was nice and sweet? Here, I'll try to do it and make her into a completely different person. Click, clack, clickety, click, clack, click, clack, click, clack. Oh, I just can't find my ticket in this parking lot. Hi. Here's a hundred dollars. <laughs> Peace be with you, my man. I didn't catch your name. That's so so nice. My name's Barbara. My name's Barbara. That's a beautiful, it's a beautiful name. Are we related? What's your last name? Thorn Slapper. My name's Thorn Grabber. I guess but have a nice day and thanks. And uh, you know, I'm gonna go home and stay true to my husband. Things feel different now. Senior's gone. Senior who? My dad. Your what? <laughs> who passed away several years ago mysteriously. He vanished in this very parking structure. Huh. Huh. Did that make things more convoluted? Let me, let me change. <laughs> Hang on. I gotta... I gotta check... Thorn scratcher apedia. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> this used to be called Wikipedia. Oh my god. Wait, how do you remember that? <laughs> I've lived here longer than anyone else. Good point. <laughs> so Wikipedia is just all about <laughs> the Thorn Scratcher family. <laughs> No, it's the same exact thing as Wikipedia. It's just, it's just Wikipedia? called, I do remember, I remember, I remember thing. what that is. It's GoBots and Transformers. Man. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about GoBots and Transformers? No, oh. I don't understand what you're telling me. Let me see if I can help. Thank you. You ever see the movie The Mothman? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Injured, cold, all that? Nope, that's the wrong one. I'm thinking of the wrong Are one. Are you sure? <laughs> One with uh, Ashton Kutcher and... The butterfly uh, effect. No, that's not it. All so, right. One where... One little thing can... We've been at this for six hours. What movie is it? Right, I think... I oh, think uh, somebody from that 70s show is... Wait, wait did, you, did you feel that? Like a temporal... Yeah. Like so... A, like a temporal disturbance. Yes, it's like... No. Oh you, oh, you didn't feel it. No. I... All right. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Anyway, mm -hmm. it's somebody from that 70s show. That's the wrong button. <laughs> that 
is the wrong button to lift the gate. That button doesn't lift the gate. Oh, that's what you're saying. That's what I'm saying yeah, to you. That's the wrong button. Right. So You want to hit the other button that lifts the gate. Look, I, I don't think this is a good job for me. Maybe you should just leave this parking garage unattended for all time. I'm about to do that. Oh, wait. Wh- where are we? I feel like I feel like there's something happening in a parking garage like this one at this exact same time. Like a like a temporal disturbance. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like in that movie, uh, it's a uh, Justin Hoffman's divorced. He's having a fight with his ex-wife. He's got a little kid. Donnie, if you could step into my office again, I'd appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, you've been putting the laptops on the lower level of the parking garage in that container, and they go upstairs where the dumb shits are. <laughs> oh, I've been such a baboose. <laughs> you really have, pal. But don't worry about it. Just uh, correct the. So you want me to bring the ones that've been down here upstairs? That'd be great. Yeah. That's a whole lot of bins. It might may take me my whole shift, all three and a half hours. <laughs> Nobody hires full time no more. <laughs> Budget cuts. You saw what happened to Circuit City. <laughs> anyway, Donnie. I'll get to moving those bins. Great. And maybe I'll try and employ somebody in a park construction. <laughs> I'll go out the back. <laughs> All right. What? Wait, what's going on? Where? Where did the parking garage guy go and Mr. Junior? I'm Batra. Batra? Yeah, Cleo Batra. <laughs> What's your last name? My last name? Please. Jafarge. <gasps> like the band? <laughs> or the Aladdin character? Kind of a mashup. I'm into mashups. <laughs> Say, you didn't happen to see a parking garage attendant and uh, a weirdo, did you? Yeah, I'm spinning them like webs. I'm a creator of worlds, you see. What? Dimensions and realities unfolding like reflections in a hall of mirrors. <laughs> and you are my lab rat test subject. Subject. Labra with- test? Yeah. Barbara Labra test. <laughs> Is that my name? Because you have to figure out which Wikipedia reality is the actual reality to get out of the garage. You've been given four. Only one can be real. (laughs) So is it this one? It's not this one. Wait, wait, this guy's like a weird gargoyle guy. (laughs) This one's a bit of a glitch. I'm taking the laptops upstairs, Mrs. Ivan. What happened? Thank you, Baboose. A little hint. Follow your heart. Follow my heart. Follow your heart. Follow my heart. Follow my heart. Yeah, you can't leave without a ticket, and now there's a chair in this booth. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you mean, now there's a chair in this booth? <laughs> Oops, I guess this isn't the reality you were looking for. Oh, no! <laughs> yeah, you can't leave this garage because there's no chairs uh, in my face. <laughs> Cleopatra? Your face is shaking back and forth and then a smoke thing is coming out of it. Have a nice trip. Oh, I don't like it. Yeah, now you can't leave the parking garage because the booth is on this side. Mr. Junior! Yeah. Whoa. Why is everybody a weird octopus monster? Yeah, go ahead and leave. You don't need a ticket. What? Are you sure? No. I tell you what what if I get in my car and I drive towards the exit are you going to raise the arm of the thing in that sweatpants and t-shirt that you're wearing what happened to my designer suit I was working in (laughs) 
Ja. Follow my heart. And follow my heart. Uh, hello. Hi. You look normal. Thank you. So do you. <laughs> Thank you. Wasn't, wasn't fishing, but I like what I caught. <laughs> Aren't you a charmer? My name's Shelly. Shelly, hi. Hi. I'm, I'm Ben. Oh, that's a nice name. Uh, thank you. It's from the Bible, I think. <laughs> so, so is Shelly. A lot of people don't know that. Oh, no, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Oh, when God says you can't eat shellfish. <laughs> you would think. But it's when that lady turned around and turned into a pillar of shells. <laughs> I do stand-up comedy. I'm not very good at oh, it. Oh, no, I think you're really funny. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, a lot of people say that to me. Is this your day job, working at this parking garage? Yeah, I'm just trying to make ends meet because um, I'm recently single and uh, just just trying to... Mingle? <laughs> do you do comedy? <laughs> I mean, I wish. I. You should. Do you think I'm funny enough to do stand-up comedy? You're making me laugh. <laughs> and you're making me... Nervous or something. I don't know. What I do you like a butterfly effect going on or something. Oh. <laughs> huh. Maybe maybe that's what I want to do. Maybe I should follow my heart and do stand up comedy. If that means leaving, you should do that, but I hate to see you leave. Well do you like to watch me walk away? <laughs> <laughs> More jokes from me. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm Twitter-baited. <laughs> well, well, listen, uh, uh, what was your name again? Shelly. Shelly from the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> like Jenny from the block, but Shelly from the Bible. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Am I able to leave the parking garage even though I don't have a ticket? Well, yeah, you're not even in a car. I can't stop you from walking out of here. As much as I'd like to. <laughs> it's true, though. I... Now I don't remember parking a car in here at all. Well, this... Why would you park a car in here? Wait a minute. This, this isn't is... a parking garage. It's a Best Buy. <laughs> I'm the person that checks your receipt to make sure you don't steal anything. <laughs> did I get to this Best Buy? The last thing I remember. Alright. I'm just gonna get on my bike. We, we call you a cab, pal. Nope. Come on, man. Let us call you an Uber. So. I love the feel of the wind on my face. Don't do it! What happened to me? Shelly, what happened to me? Are you okay? My teeth are gone. Oh, let me. I picked him up. I've been keeping him. Yeah. That's a stick of dynamite. Hold on. <laughs> Let's get you fixed up. Let me take care of you. Really? What? Really? I'm <laughs> saying, <laughs> really? Hey, uh, one of you guys want one of these, these day-old laptops? I'm getting rid of them. I gotta take them upstairs. <laughs> hey, you know, take them on me. Oh. Nice lips. <laughs> hey, I'm doing a set over at Ernie's Chuckle Bunch. I don't have... I've got a plus one, and I, I've got no one to give it to. I'd love to go watch you do Shadow Comedy. Oh, I, w I wish you would say yes. My answer is yes. Are you sure you won't go? No. <laughs> My answer is yes. I gotta get out of this parking garage, best boy! <laughs> Come on. Come with me. I think this is gonna be nice. <laughs> and 
it all happened at a place called Parking Garage. Mark McConville, ladies and gentlemen. Mark, if people wish to find you online, where can they find you? On Twitter, at Mark McConville. On Instagram, at Mark McConville. McConville.tubler.com. You're doing those funny lists. You've yeah, been doing, doing those for a while. They're fun to do. I hope you're still doing them by the time this comes out. <laughs> I, I plan to. And then also at Shrimps Radio to follow Pistol Shrimps Radio on Twitter. Yes. <laughs> Pistol, and you have a show. Yes, it's called Opening show. Night, the Improvised Musical. Every Friday night, 9 o'clock, I.O. West, 6366 Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> Full stop. Uh, it's a one-hour improvised musical show, and it's fantastic. Please come. Also featuring uh, our friend Shirley Cowan. That's correct. That's right. Yeah. Uh, 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 opening night, the improvised musical. Not dot com, though. I don't think. No, I'm just re- I'm just re- restating the title of the show. Correct. Oh, and <laughs> speaking of Pistol Shrimps Radio, <laughs> Matt Gorley, half of Pistol Shrimps Radio. Can people find you online that wish to find you there? Mag O'Reilly at Twitter and Instagram. Uh, the I Was There 2 podcast. Uh, thank you. Super Ego, Pistol Shrimps, James Bonding. Uh, that's it. Thank you. That's enough. Yeah, that's that's cool. enough podcasts. Jeremy Carter. On Twitter, at Shunt McGuppin. <laughs> Super Ego. Instagram, Jeremy A. Carter. Used to be Cartero, and I changed it. I remember that. I remember that? It was a typo, and then I left it because it entertained me for a week. And then I changed it back. Why Jeremy A. Carter? Do you have a middle name? I have a middle name, bro. <laughs> oh, Aaron. Okay. What do you mean? Welcome to my new identity as Jeremy Aaron Carter. No! Yep, too late. <laughs> no. Uh, and is there anything you'd like to plug for the people? What would you like to tell the people the about? the Shunt McGuppin, uh, which all of these people are on. The Shunt McGuppin, um, I almost call it Gets Real Hard, but that isn't it. <laughs> that was that was a title you considered. That was the original title. That was the title you considered. Uh, Bad, Bad Honky! Honky. <laughs> Sean McGuffin EP, Bad Honky. Correct. I'm on it, Matt's on it, Mark's on it. Other f***ers. I have one more thing I need to plug. Please, I wish you would, Matt. Your birthday, happy birthday! Now why? Why did it, why did it turn into a code red? Um, that's, enough, that's enough of that. That's <laughs> I, you were going to say the, su- the Journeyman album. Nah, fuck that. <laughs> anyway, what a joy it was to have you guys here. Eben Schletter. You can find him at ebenschletter.com, Eben Schletter on Twitter. Go to Eben's website, check out his albums, buy them because Eben Schletter is only the best. As for me. <laughs> What would I like to promote? <laughs> Nothing. I don't care. This show. I want to promote this show. Tell people about it. Next month, we have an amazing lineup uh, that I will tell you about. Um, I'll tell you now, and we'll cut it out. Because this, this, will, this episode will drop way after that show has happened. <laughs> so October 3rd, Saturday, October 3rd, uh, my improvisers will be... My friends from Know You Shut Up, Colleen Smith, Drew Massey, and Victor Yared, who have been on Spontaneation many times. And our interview guest will be Susanna Hoffs from The Bangles. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 
Maybe, maybe you'll want to come to that show. I might want to come to that show. Oh. Uh, and that's and we have a we have a crazy song planned for that show. I'm very oh. excited about it. So please do come with that. Tickets are on sale now, you guys. We'll be outside in the uh, in the courtyard signing stuff for you. So come by and say hello. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, thank you to Tony over there helping keeping things on track behind the scenes. Thank you to Largo engineer Chris in the booth. Thank you very much, Chris, for everything here. Thank you to everyone here at Largo with Cornet for letting us do the show here. Thank you to our friends at Earwolf for hosting the show. And now we are at the end. And there goes him. <laughs> that is our show. Thank you so much for coming out. Goodbye forever. Until next week. This is Paul F. Tompkins saying, Semper in presenting. Hey, it's Sean Clements from Hollywood Handbook, and it, that's an Earwolf podcast. And it's come to my attention that Earwolf and Howl has been doing a nefarious activity where they are sneaking uh, clips from other shows into the end of podcasts. And it happened on ours, and I thought it was morally questionable at best, and we should we would never do that to you, try to trick us into listening to our podcast. So this is just me making an announcement to you, a listener of a different show, that we will never, ever try to sneak a clip of our show into the end of another show because, frankly, it's disgusting to me. And I hope, I hope, Hope, I hope that they do not attach a clip of my show that they feel would be a highlight and a selling point to an uninitiated listener onto the end of this message. It would defeat the entire purpose of what I'm saying, and they promised me they wouldn't. And so now what's going to happen is I'll stop talking and nothing else will play afterwards. And that's the way I want it. And that's what's good. And you're welcome for me being so righteous. There are just so many other options for who could have done this. Some of the really tough guys out there. Maybe someone actually tough. Who should have been the Batman. For example, how about one of these Metallica guys? Nothing's tougher than rocking, rocking out so hard. On the drums. It could have been, and I hate to say this, but what about Kim Jong Un? Yes, what about Kim Jong Un? Who's scarier and tougher? And who's rich and can afford all those gadgets? Yes. Hollywood Handbook. This has been an Earwolf production. Executive producers Scott Ockham, Adam Sachs, Chris Bannon, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to Earwolf.com. 